Divorce, widower, widow, doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what state you're in, you can be complete in Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Don't be running around here talking about, oh, I just see everybody else getting married. I just wish I could be complete. You don't know the hell they going through, honey. You just, you sitting up there talking about trying to trying to do what they you trying to you, you, you worried about them and, and if you if they if you knew they were looking at you jealous of your life. Don't envy anybody else. Just be complete in Christ. Be happy for who God made you. And the Bible says the life is it says abide in your calling. Pastor, you saying that if I'm not married, I, I can never get married? I didn't say that. But while you ain't married, abide in the calling that you have right now. And have be content in the state that you're Come on, somebody. Be content in the state that you are in. Because if you're in the marriage state, you know, it has its challenges. If you're over here in the unmarried state, it has its challenges. If you're over here in the divorce state, it don't matter what state you're in. Just get complete in Christ. If you receive that, give God some praise. Amen. Listen to me. Last week we said the devil will always try to tell you you're incomplete. You're incomplete. You're incomplete. But we tell him I'm complete in Christ. And watch this. What we learned last week is when you are complete in Christ, watch this now, you will bear much fruit. Did you all remember that last week out of John 15? Oh, that show was good. In other words, Jesus said, I am the true vine and you are the branches. And he said, if you abide in me, what will happen? You will bear what kind of fruit? Say, say much fruit. Church, I'm here to tell you, if we will abide in Christ, we will bear much fruit. How do we abide in Christ? He doesn't leave us, we leave him. How do we abide in Christ? By study, study, meditate, pray, and fast. Somebody say it. Study, meditate, pray, and fast. Say it like you mean it now. Study, meditate, pray, and fast. And what's going to happen? Victory you sure to have. That's it. Victory you sure to have. Study, meditate, pray, and fast. Now that's abiding in Christ. That's abiding in Christ. In other words, when I meditate, watch this church, when I meditate on God's word, that will cause me to speak and pray his word. That will cause me to be confident in his word. I don't know about you, church, but I, I, I pray like this. I'm blessed and highly favored in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that I'm a child of God. I thank you, Father, that I'm an heir of the Most High. I thank you, Father, that through Christ I'm strong in the Lord and, and in the power of his might. See, I, when, I, when I pray God's word, I pray like this. Uh, God's grace uh, is great. God's grace is amazing. God's grace is sufficient for me. It's sufficient for everything I got going on. When I pray by the word because of the word I meditate, I say it like this. I say, thank you, Father, that though things are happening all around me, I have the peace that passes all understanding. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I thank you, Father, that though I may be feeling a little air in my body, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm healed from the crown of my head to the soul of my feet. Why? Because I've been meditating on that thing. And I pray what I've been meditating on. I say in the name of Jesus, Father, that I pay my tithes. And I know that you open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing that I don't have room enough to receive. See, I pray and I pray, I pray what, I, what I meditate and I pray that I know that I am favored, blessed and highly favored. I'm starting to learn church you don't need to get there. I'm starting to learn about this favor. This favor is deep. This favor is wide. I'm trying to tell you, this grace and favor is something. Because here's the thing. I'm starting to understand that when you really have the favor of the Lord, you don't need money. I'm trying to tell you, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not advocating that you don't work. That's not my point. I'm trying to tell you that when you really operate in the favor of the Lord, uh, uh, God, I thank you every day that you give me favor. Uh, number one, favor. Number two, resources. Number three, finances. I say it in that order because if I have favor and resources, I find out a lot of times I don't need finances. The Lord will make a way. The Lord has people who will give you money. The Lord has people who will give you favor. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said if I would abide in you, in my your word abide in me, I can ask what I will and it shall be done unto me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It didn't take us a whole lot of money to put on that play. We had favor. 
We had resources. Like the man came up here and said, he said, well, how did they do that? They didn't have all these curtains. They didn't have all these strings. They didn't have all this stuff. We had faith. We had resources. The, the play was filmed professionally. Thank you, sister. My, my wonderful sister here who said, she just showed up and said, Pastor, I got these cameras. I said, what cameras are you talking about? Are you talking about a little camcorder? She said, no, studio-grade professional cameras. And she said, the Lord laid on my heart for me to film the play. And I said, well, hallelujah for the Lord laying that on your heart. Praise him. Because I didn't have the money to pay you for no studio break. I'm talking about quality television type cameras. And then, then the next day, uh, she had, she told me that. Then I go to a, a, a church and I'm with uh, uh, my, my apostle and we're taping for TV. And he said, Pastor, we're taping this show for TV. Now, he asked me to be on this show with him for television. I didn't have no money to get on television. He just asked me to be on this thing. And Lord, and they, they said, now when you get on there, we're going to put your name on the screen. We're going to let people know about your church. And I said, praise be to God. Then when we get on there, before we start taping, the woman come by and say, oh, Pastor Tucker, um, we want to uh, do something before you get on with all the pastors. Going on. I said, what do you want to do? They said, we want to make up your face. We want to, you know, because it's going to go on television and we want to make you up. So she was a professional makeup artist. Then the Lord said, now this is the day of the play, Friday morning. Then the Lord spoke my heart and said, hire her to do makeup for everybody in the cast. And I said, well, what are you doing tonight? And she said, well, why do you ask? I said, I know this is the last minute, but we have a play tonight. Do you think maybe you can come by and help uh, us uh, uh, get made up? Because we're going to be, now we got some professional TV cameras. We got to have some professional makeup, right? And then she said, well, yeah, I charge uh, X amount of dollars. And I said, ooh, okay, well, that's, I said, well, praise the Lord. And I said, well, she said, how many people you got in the play? I said, we got about nine people in the play. And I said, but I really wanted to get it for the men because, you know, the women already wear makeup. And the men at our church, we don't wear no makeup. I said, so you can come help the men. We got four men in the play. You can make them up. That woman came in here and she made up everybody in the play for the same price. Come on, come on. Come on. Church, I'm going to spend the rest of my time telling you about this favor of God. Let's look at this. This is lesson number five, and I want to entitle it The Eternal and Abundant Life. The Eternal and Abundant Life. Somebody say, Eternal, Eternal. And, abundant. and Abundant Life. 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 You can subtitle it, Do Your Part. Do Your Part. Listen to me. The scripture today is John 10.10. 10. The Bible says the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come so that they might have life and that, and they might have it more abundantly. Somebody say life, life. And, abundant life. and abundant life. In other words, when Jesus was speaking there, he actually was talking about two different types of life. He was talking about eternal life. And then he was talking about abundant life. And, and here, and I submit to you this, in my opinion, he was saying, I want you to have eternal life unto the heavens. That's right. That's but I want you to have abundant life right here on the earth. Right the oh, come on, somebody. He said, I want you to have eternal life unto the heavens. In other words, going into the kingdom. You know, but I want you to have abundant life right here in the earth. Somebody say, I receive it. Now watch this. I have three quick quick points that I want to get into this. Point number one, I want you to understand that even though I said eternal life was unto the heavens, once you got born again, you have, you have eternal life right now. Say, I have eternal life right now. Yeah, you really do have it right now because your sins have been forgiven and God has promised you that not only... Do you know, not only does sin no longer separate you from God, but what he has promised is that you will not only have, you will not only not have uh, spiritual death, you will not have eternal death. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not, what? Shall not perish. What he was saying is, you won't have any separation from God eternally. That's what he was saying. So, you have eternal life now. Point number two. I enjoy abundant life now as long as I 
abide in Christ. I enjoy abundant life now as long as I abide in Christ. So not only do you have this eternal life unto the heavens right now, because you're a citizen of heaven right now. You are a citizen. Let, let me tell you something. You're more, of a, you're more of a citizen of heaven than you are of the United States of America. Amen. I know that may shock some of y'all. I'm not trying to take your U.S. citizenship from you, but guess what? I don't have to take it from you. It's going to run out. It is. You said, Pastor, what you talking about? That's blasphemy. No, that's just true for me. It's, it's true for me and it's true for you. It's going to run out because when you die, you, your body will die, but your spirit will, will live on. And your spirit will not be a citizen of the United States of America. I got that some breaking news, y'all. Your citizen will not be a your, your spirit will not be a citizen of the USA. Your spirit, even now, is a citizen of the kingdom of God. Let's give God some praise. You're a citizen of the kingdom. Now, so, God says you have eternal life now. God wants you to enjoy abundant life right now. In other words, he said, I gave came that you might have life and that more abundantly. He said, until you actually come into the fullness of the kingdom, you live in the earth. And he said, because you're my child, I want all your earthly, natural, material needs met. And I want it to even be more than met. I want it to overflow. You know what overflow means. It's when you look in your closet and you, you see how, ladies, you look in that closet and you see how many shoes, pair of shoes you got. And you say, I ain't even got no place to put another pair, but you end up going out and get another pair. That's abundance. When you look in your cupboard and you can feed half the folk in Ethiopia with some of that stuff in your cupboard because you ain't eating all that stuff. You got canned goods and stuff in there. Something, but because why? Because God has, abundance means more than enough. It means more than what you personally need. And even though we may think that we're not living the lifestyles of the rich and famous, the truth be told, you have more than what you personally need. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. If I came by your house right now and I went to your garage, I would. I, I bet you, you have more than what you... Can I get an amen, somebody? Up in here. You have more than what... If I went to see your closet, you have more than what you personally need. You got to in, in fact, you got some stuff that you just refuse to throw out. You won't get rid of it. You might, you say, and every time, you, every time your spouse or relative or somebody tells you to get rid of it, you say, you know, I don't know if I need it. I'm just the day I'm gonna need this. It, 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 just when I throw it away, that's the day I'm gonna need. So I'm gonna hold on to this, this name room jacket and these belt and these, these. Uh, it's gonna come back around, and I'm, I, I'm just holding on to this. Somebody to, yeah, keep, to keep hope alive, okay? But but listen, here we go. Here we go. I got to get this today. Third point. Eternal life. This is the key point today. Eternal life and abundant life are both a product of God's part and my part. If you don't get anything else today out of what I said, I'm really trying to drive this point home. Eternal life and abundant life. That's what we're talking about today. Somebody say eternal life and abundant life. And abundant See, they're two different things. Watch this. They're two different things because you can have eternal life and not have abundant life. I know some people that that's why we're praying this week for people to be more fruitful. Because there's some saved folk, they're on their way to heaven, but they're not living heavenly abundance right here on earth. They're not. They're not living the abundant life. Sister Martha, there are some people, they're saved, but they're not living the abundant life. So now we want to find out how can you have eternal life and abundant life. And we want that because looks like the scripture said, Jesus said, I came that you might have what? Life. And that more abundantly. Guess what the key word was? Guess what the key word there was? Huh? Say it. No, close. And, 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 I came that you might have life, and, and is a conjunction. That means it's, it's, it's leading to something that's going to be put together with after that. If he said, so if he wanted you just to have eternal life, he would have just said, I came that you might have eternal life. That's it. Stop right there. He said, I came that you might have life. Somebody say, and. and. So he was trying to tell you there was more than just being saved and living a miserable life here on earth. He was saying, I want you to have eternal life unto the heaven, but I want you to have abundant life until you get there in the earth. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
I mean, come on, somebody. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Lord. So you. I can't, he said eternal. So eternal life and abundant life are both a product of God's part and my part. Now, church, I wish I had time to preach this thing to you. Next week, I'm going to start right with this. Listen to what I just said. This thing, Jesus wants us to have eternal life and abundant life. And he said, the way you get both, because we don't want just one. We want both. Say, I want both. I want both. Somebody say, I want everything, I want everything. That, Jesus that Jesus wants me to have. And I just proved you he wants you to have eternal and abundant. Say eternal and abundant. Say it again until you get it. Say eternal and abundant. Say I want them both. I want them both. And I want them right now. I want them right now. Now you got eternal and you got abundant, but they're both, they're promised to you, but they're both a product of God's part and your part. What am I really saying? You can have both of them because Jesus wants you to have them. But both parts have to be in play. What are the parts? His part and my part. This is, this is some revelation for us. If you really get it down in your heart, it'll change your life. It's changed my life. you got to understand that everything that God wants you to have, good God Almighty, this is some good stuff right here. If y'all get this, Everything God wants you to have, eternal and abundant, is a two-part process. His part and your part. His, somebody say, his part, his part and, my part. and my part. Say it again. His, his part, part and my part. Say, there have to be both parts, to, be both parts to, make to make a whole. Are you getting this? It's not going to work with just his part. It definitely ain't going to work with just your part. Now watch it, but it's not going to work with just his part. So watch this. Here's my, here's my thing. God's part, who knows what God's part is? Grace. 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 That's his part. If we're making a cake or something, it's a two-ingredient cake. But you need both parts. You need both ingredients. His ingredient, his part is what? Grace. Grace. What's our part? Faith. Boy, it's a good well taught church. I like to be the pastor of this church. Somebody say Grace. Grace. And faith. See that and. You see that and? See how important that and is? Say grace, grace. and faith. And faith. You gotta have both. And is a conjunction. It means it's tying what's coming after together with what came before. It is the it is the it is the tying element in the sentence. Uh, I know my literary uh, coach there can give you a better uh, definition of, of conjunction, but that's the best I can give you right now. A conjunction is that with conjunct. It joins with. It joins two things together. So that and says you need grace what? And faith. Say it again. Grace, grace and faith. One more time. Grace, grace and faith. That's it. Now, God's part is grace. Your part is faith. And watch this. I, this is something we got to reprogram our mind about. Now, I understand that the typical definition of grace that we all grew up with was God's unmerited favor. And I understand the scripture. We're going to go to the scripture. And it tells you you don't get saved by works. So don't think the path has done gone crazy. And then we become a cult. And I'm telling you that, you know, that, that God needs you to your work to get saved. I'm not saying he needs your work to get saved. But he does need your faith. If, so I'm making a very important statement to you. And look what it is. Eternal life. Remember we're talking about eternal life and abundant life, right? Yes. Eternal life comes by way of saving grace. Or another way of saying it is eternal life comes by way of grace and faith. In other words, it comes by way of God's part and your part. If that was not true, then everybody would be saved because God does want everybody to be saved, right? Second right. Peter 3 and 9, it is not God's will that any man should perish. Say God. God. Say what you say. God, God. Wants, everybody wants everybody to be saved, to be saved. By, grace. by grace. But everybody won't. Because they don't receive it by faith. Now, am I right? If I'm wrong, am I, minister, am I right about it? So it does take two parts, doesn't it? It does take both parts. So let's look at the scripture. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It says, for by grace. You are saved. But did you notice it didn't stop there? 
It says, for by grace you are saved. But what? Through faith. Through faith. Somebody say, there's God's part. And there's my part. It's right there. Now, I understand when people say, yeah, but you, you don't, you're not saved by works. I didn't say that. But you do need to receive the grace by faith. You have to do this. What I'm trying to get you to get is that it doesn't matter whether it's eternal life or abundant life. Listen to me. You always have a part. I wonder who got that. Whether it's eternal life or abundant life, you always have a part. Even to get saved. Amen. You have to. Those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Those that believe in their heart and what? Confess with their mouth shall be that Jesus is Lord shall be. Do you see what I'm saying? So you, you got to get a correct and rightly divided understanding. You got to get a correct interpretation of the scripture. It says, for by grace you are saved through faith and not of yourselves, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. True. That's great. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. No, you don't get yourself saved, but honey, you sure got to have faith to receive the grace that God has given. You sure got to have enough faith to call on the name of Jesus. You got to do that part. In, in other words, this is not saying you don't have a part. This is saying you can't do enough good works to get saved. You, can't, you can get confused by this. This is saying there's no good enough works that you can do to get saved. But it doesn't mean that you don't have a part. You have to receive it by faith. You have to call upon the name of Jesus. God is still leaving one and faith without works is dead. So it is not work, good works, but there is a work of faith that you have to do. You have to call upon. Can I get a witness? You got to call on Jesus. I'm, I'm sorry, honey. You got to call on him because the Bible says if you don't call on him, if you're ashamed to call on him down here, he'll be ashamed to call on you up there. You got to open up your mouth. You can sit there and look pretty if you want to. You can sit there and look proud if you want to. You can sit there and say, well, I ain't going to call on him. He knows my heart. No, baby. He knows your heart and your mouth. You need to call on the name of the Lord and get saved because faith without works is dead. Amen. Amen. But Pastor, what about the person who can't speak? Well, he, he deal with them on a different, different level. He knows their heart, but he knows you can talk, so you got to say something. Somebody say, say something. Church, I'm here to tell you, listen to me. Eternal life comes by way of what? Grace and faith. Even eternal life, grace and faith. We'll say it again. Grace and faith. Please say it with me. Grace and faith. Say it one more time. Grace and faith. Somebody said, Pastor's beating this thing into us. I I'm really trying to because this is the secret of why people are not living the abundant life. Say it, folks. They forgot how they got saved. Or maybe they never understood how they got saved. Maybe we heard so much about grace being unmerited favor that we didn't understand how we got saved. Man, I'm telling you, I'm, this is you guys. Ooh, good God Almighty, this is. I'm telling you, this is good stuff. You know why? Because here's how I got the revelation. I got the revelation one day when I just the Holy Ghost told me, look up the word grace in the Bible. And I looked up the word grace and I found out that the word grace was mentioned over 40 times in the Old Testament. And that's when the light came on. I said, oh, wait a minute. So nobody was saved in the Old Testament and yet he was talking about grace. Then that can't be saving grace. And then I did more research on it. I found out there is more than one type of grace. The root of grace is basically the favor of God to man. So there is a saving grace, but there's a, also a non-saving grace. In the Old Testament, God gave favor, but it wasn't unto salvation. Come on, somebody, you understand what I'm talking about. 
So yeah. guess what? Since there is a grace that is that has nothing to do with salvation, that after you get saved, there is also a grace that has nothing to do with salvation. And God calls that greater grace or great grace. And it's not there for your eternal life, but baby, it's shown up is there for your abundant life. I hope you can get this thing today. Yeah. 